So Vlad, you and I from this desk have yes. covered all manner of stories, but I think you'll agree that sort of amongst the most heartbreaking and, and really disappointing ones are school shootings. And sometimes, because we're on all the time, um, you know, sometimes we cover things that don't make the news widespread, and you would be surprised how many shootings there are that actually don't become big news stories. Right. There are uh, many instances of students pulling guns and weapons being found yeah. on students uh, that don't get a lot of news coverage. Uh, if we focus generally on the mass shootings, but not on the number of incidences with weapons in schools, the number would be greater. So true. And last year was the worst year for school shootings in the United States to date. Students from 94 schools across the nation experienced an armed intruder coming into their schools and more than 50 people lost their lives in these devastating shootings. Nationwide, many students are becoming fearful for their safety, but some students are using STEM, that's science, technology, engineering, and math, to tackle the issue. So Jordan Bell is a senior at Richland II Institute of Innovation in South Carolina, and Paige Taylor is a senior at Owensville High School in Missouri. Both of them decided to tackle the issue of school shootings for Samsung's Solve for Tomorrow competition. And they're joining us here What's today. What's up? Hi. Thank you so much. How are you guys? Good. How are you? So listen, I don't know anything about this Solve for Tomorrow competition. Tell me about it. Well, Samsung always does this competition yearly since for the past nine years where they ask a question like solve a problem in your community and they give uh, states, schools, uh, schools in each state get to compete to be the number one, the school to represent their state mm -hmm. and then we compete again for nationals. So like right now we are the, in the top, both of us are in the top 10 national finalists. And so did your schools separately decide that school shootings was going to be what you tackled? Oh yeah, we yeah. both saw it as an issue and we separately like, Wait. I didn't know there was another school working on this project right. until we got to the national level, so. So we're seeing you, Paige, here on the screen. Uh, what are you doing in this, in this video that we're watching here? Uh, so in this video, we are doing our pitch event in the uh, Samsung 837, and we are basically just pitching our project and telling the judges what it is, and they ask us questions about it and the process and everything. So what is your project yeah, for your school? Yeah, let's hear school? that pitch. Let's hear that pitch. Okay, so um, my design was just, it was an extra lock. One bracket would go on the door and one bracket would go on the door frame. So this lock would be kept in the classroom and it, only in case of an intruder, that lock would be put in place. And it's made out of an aluminum alloy and it's a really uh, strong, compact design. So it, would, it wouldn't be a last defense, but it would be used to stall the intruder and save time for the students to escape the situation. Mm -hmm. and, and Jordan, Jordan. Yeah, what's yours, Jordan? Or, so, or I should say the <laughs> Richland Two Institute, yeah. right? That's the school right. that you represent. Uh, so our project is, a, we use electromagnetics, uh, to hold open a door and a curtain. So when there is an intruder, the teacher, and we've even talked to maybe even a security guard can press a button. And the curtain falls down in like two seconds flat and the door will close and that way it defies the visibility mm -hmm. so you can cover up the windows that, uh, so the intruder doesn't see where people are hiding and things like that. Because we felt, um, you know, a lot of people ask why is the door open and things like that. We felt that we wanted students to live cautiously, not fearfully. We don't want anybody to be afraid to go to school, mm -hmm. to be afraid of anything. We want people to still feel like there's uh, openness into their school and things like that. So for us, we were like, why don't we have the door open in like a compromise, but if there is a, a case of an emergency, a teacher or a security guard, they can press a simple button and that door will close and lock and the curtain will fall down so quickly. So what's What's sort of killing me here is that like Vlad and I are from the stop, drop, and roll uh, era of childhood where we just had to worry about what, what we do in case of a the fire. Soviet Union right? attacking us with a nuclear weapon. Well, I'm, well, I'm not from that era. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it sort of breaks my heart that this is the first thing that came to mind for, for you guys, how to protect yourself in the case of an active shooter. Um, I'm just wondering, you know, talk to me a little bit about sort of living with that fear. It's uh, kind of surreal. Yeah. It's, um, you know, I've, I've, I live by the idea that I shouldn't live in fear, but it is something to be cautious about. You, you need to know, like, I need to, un we need to know what to do if there was a situation. Who do we, uh, who do we, you know, we have to, they, teachers have to tell us, like, we cannot open the door. If there's a lockdown situation, you do not open the door police they will find a way to get to you yeah. uh, it's just kind of we have all of these procedures we do do lockdown drills a lot and um, that just kind of comes into play you kind of sad to say but you do kind of get used to it you just have to know 
I feel like every student should be prepared. You need to, it better to be prepared than the safe better than sorry. Right. So that's Is that what you were thinking as well? I mean, team? our school has had a few threats mm. from uh, students and even people outside of the school. Mm. So just knowing that, I think that puts more fear in the students at school and I mean, do you think knowing that there are remedies like the ones that you guys are coming up with reduces the fear? Yeah, I would hope so. I, that's like our goal is just to try to reduce the fear, but still keep it where it's like people understand that this is a serious issue, but we don't want people, like we said, just to be fearful. No one's, no student should be like, mom, I don't want to go to school today. I'm afraid somebody's going to come and attack me. Right. Like that's, that's a sad thing to say. And every child and every teacher, every principal that goes to a school should come back home. So let me ask you a question, because this is a real important subject and I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're covering it with us and explaining to our audience because this is really important. Um, Paige, you, you said you've been doing lockdown drills. How long have you been doing those in school? As long as I can remember. As long as you can yeah. remember. You've we have been... one almost every year. So. Every year you, and what about you, Jordan? Same, about twice a year probably. It's like you do have them and they'll come up. So here's a question, and this may be a bigger question perhaps for your parents, your elected officials, but these, these proposals that you have, they almost seem to be in a way trying Accepting. to remedy the, what the reality is, which is that in your school, you said yourself, and when I asked you where your school was, you sort of jokingly said it's in the middle of nowhere, yes. right? It's not, we're not talking about urban schools, we're not talking, we're talking about schools as, to use your words, in the middle of nowhere that are happening all across this country, where people are bringing weapons into your schools and forcing you to come up with these innovative solutions to try and prevent mass shootings, to prevent death, essentially. Um, You've seen your peers in Parkland, Florida, and in other schools across the country taking the fight to their elected officials with regards to trying to curb the number of weapons in this country. Is that something that you've thought about as well? You can either. <laughs> I was going to let you. Um, personally, I have not. Just uh, I feel like for me, STEM techniques is the best way to go for it's just trying to find out little inventions that we can have. Uh, there, uh, it's just a route that I personally like to take. And so, like Samsung Software Tomorrow, they really gave us this opportunity to. They were like, "Hey, just do whatever you feel like you can." And like our group was like, "This is something we could do." So for us, Samsung could really gave us this opportunity to. So for me, STEM techniques is the route that I like to take. What about you, Paige? I mean, same here, but we used our STEM techniques to, the goal is just to put everybody, like whenever they're in that situation, we want them to feel more in control and like they actually have power over their life so they can right. have something, you know, to go up against this type of situation. Yeah. You know, a lot of I, sense empowerment, right? Empowerment is yeah. really what it's all about. And I did, I did a story where we went into a school with uh, fourth grade, fourth and fifth graders and we watched them take part in these mass shooting drills. And there is something, and we talked about this, there's something about seeing little four foot Humans. Yeah, they, thought, they look so helpless. They're so helpless, and they're putting, putting the doors, put, yeah. you know, barricading the doors with chairs and picking up pencil books to try and defend themselves. And yet, there was comfort in that for them. They right. thought that they were doing something that would protect themselves and their classmates just in the same way that you guys are doing that. So hey, thank you very much. I'm super impressed. I mean, Me like I said, I come from an era where to stop and drop. I so, know. Uh, we, we weren't thinking science and not math at all. At no, all. No. I still don't. Yeah. Um, that's why I'm a journalist. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jordan Bell, Paige Taylor, thank you both so much for coming thank by. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And your classmates are over here. Thank you very much, guys, for coming by. We appreciate it. We really, this is such an important story. Thank you.